Hi everyone, Rob Cosman here, and I'm going to take you through a quick summary video on GST and HST, and I'm going to walk you through an example that hopefully will explain it pretty quickly and easily because it's an important concept. So first of all, main point of HST is that it's being paid by the final customer. Because remember, HST gets charged throughout the supply chain all the way from your manufacturer to the final person. So I put together an example here of a computer, let's say, and how it flows along from your manufacturer to the distributor to the retailer to the final customer. And I'm going to explain just kind of how HST works when you charge it and then when you pay it on supplies and you're getting input tax credits back. So in this example, we've got a $300 computer that's 300 plus 13 percent HST so it's 339 dollars that's what the final customer is going to pay and I'm going to walk you through how we get there so the first guy here is the manufacturer so he's going to actually make it and then he's selling it to this guy here who's the distributor now he sells it to the distributor let's say for hundred dollars plus thirteen dollars in HST the distributor then takes it and he sells it to the retail store for let's say $200 plus the HST, 13%, it's $26. The retail store finally then sells it to the final customer for the $339 in HST. So when you look at that along the way, you've got HST for $13, $26, and $39, which is more than the total $39 that should be there. So how do we get there? Okay, so what happens is the HST should only be $39, not the 13, the 26, and the 39 for 78. The way that you balance this out is when you're filing your HST, GST claims, you're putting in what they call ITCs or input tax credits. Those are the amounts that you actually pay on other goods that you're purchasing. So what you do is it's then the net, the HST that you collected when you sold, less the HST that you paid on expenses. So in this case, the manufacturer just made it, so he never actually paid any HST on it, so he just charged the $13 when he sold it to the distributor. So on his HST return, he's going to say, yep, I made sales of $100, I charged HST of 13 I have no ITCs, so the net he's going to pay CRA is $13. The next, the distributor, he charged 26 when he sold it to the retail store, but he paid 13 to the manufacturer when he first bought it, so 26 less 13 is 13. Finally, the retail store, he charged the final customer $39. He paid $26 when he bought it from the distributor, so he's going to send a $13 net to the CRA. So then you've got 13 plus 13 plus 13 is the total 39. So that's how HST avoids the whole double counting. So in your business, when you're going through and you're charging your customers, you're collecting that money, then you're going to send less whatever you spent in HST when you bought, I don't know, newspaper, papers, office supplies, maybe goods, like in this case, computers that you're reselling, anything like that that you're paying HST so that there's not a double or a triple count counting of HST. So the end amount you're going to get, that the government's going to get is the $39, which in fact is really just the $300 times the 13%. It's an important concept to make sure that you understand that when you register for HST, and you're charging it, the net is what you're actually paying to CRA.